This is VOA News. I'm Marissa Melton. The United States has concluded that Iran launched last week's drone and missile attacks that knocked out half of Saudi Arabia's oil production. The CBS News Network quoted unnamed officials as saying that low-altitude cruise missiles were used in the attacks early Saturday that cut Riyadh's oil production by 5.7 million barrels a day. That's nearly 6 percent of the world's oil supply. NBC News said more than 20 drones and missiles were deployed in the attacks. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence reinforced the U.S. position Tuesday in a speech. As the president said, we don't want war with anybody, but the United States is prepared. We're locked and loaded, and we're ready to defend our interests and our allies in the region. Saudi King Salman says his country is capable of defending itself against the attacks, but called on the international community to clearly confront the perpetrators. The first hearing in what House Democrats are now calling in an impeachment investigation quickly went awry today. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Magani has more. Starting with the first question from House Judiciary Committee Chair Gerald Nadler. Is it correct that as reported in the Mueller report on June 19, 2017, you met alone in the Oval Office with the president. Former Trump campaign chief Corey Lewandowski set the tone. Could you read the exact language of the report, sir? I don't have it available to me. Lewandowski says the White House ordered him not to talk about his discussions with the president beyond what's in the Mueller report. I am respecting the White House's decision. Nadler says the White House doesn't have that authority. We should call this what it is. An absolute cover-up by the White House. Lewandowski earlier blasted lawmakers for going down a rabbit hole with petty politics, drawing the president's attention. He tweeted from Air Force One, such a beautiful opening statement. Thank you, Corey. Sagar Magani, Washington. For more on this and other stories, visit us online, voanews.com. This is VOA News. The U.N. Secretary of Security Council has voted unanimously to extend and strengthen the mandate of its mission in Afghanistan, overcoming threats of a Chinese veto. The council was due to vote Monday, a day before the political mission's mandate expired. But China threatened to veto the draft resolution renewing it because it did not mention the Chinese Belt and Road Development Initiative, which links China with parts of Asia, Europe and Africa by sea and land. Afghan U.N. Ambassador Adela Raz, addressing the Security Council, welcomed the extension of the U.N. political mission in her country. This signifies the Council's support for Afghanistan at the time when the people of Afghanistan are entering a new and a crucially important phase of their long-standing effort to achieve peace and prosperity. But U.S. Ambassador Kelly Kraft said China blocked a more comprehensive resolution. I should note that the reason we cannot empower the mission with a stronger substantive mandate today is a member's insistence on language that highlights national political priorities rather than ways in which we can most effectively assist the people and government of Afghanistan. Tuesday's compromise text does not include a specific mention of the Chinese plan, but references support for regional cooperation and connectivity and working toward a prosperous Afghanistan. Exit polls in Israel's national election show that neither Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu nor challenger and former Army head Benny Gantz can put together a ruling coalition. Both sides hope the results will change as votes are counted during the night and into tomorrow. Linda Gradstein reports for VOA from Jerusalem. The exit polls were announced at 10 p.m. just as the polls closed in Israel. Based on all three exit polls, Netanyahu is not able to form a majority coalition of 61 seats in the 120-seat Knesset. Likud cabinet minister Tzachi Hanegbi said he believed Netanyahu's chances will improve as the final votes are counted. He said he still believes Netanyahu has the best chance of forming a government. Once final results are in, Netanyahu's president will consult with the leaders of each of the parties and recommend either Netanyahu or Gantz to try to put together a government. So far, it doesn't look like either the right wing or the center left will be able to do that. Linda Gradstein for VOA News, Jerusalem. Dozens of migrants took part in an asylum hearing inside a tent court in Laredo, Texas today. Acting Homeland Security Secretary Kevin McAleenan is visiting the area to tour the new facility a day after it opened. Critics have denounced the proceedings because they say they're because they are closed to the public and difficult for attorneys to access to provide legal representation. I'm Marissa Melton, VOA News. 